Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 9 of the chapter Solutions. In part 8, I was telling you about the solubility of gases in liquids and I described the Henry's law. The equation for Henry's law is P that is partial pressure of a gas is equal to KH that is the Henry's law constant into X which is the mole fraction of the solute. The partial pressure of the gas and the mole fraction of the gas, since we are talking the solute here, is a gas. So, I described the Henry's law to you and now, today, we are going to do three numerical problems based on Henry's law. The first question is example 2.4. It is the solved example of your NCRT textbook. Let us read it. The question reads, if nitrogen gas is bubbled through water at 293 Kelvin, how many millimoles of nitrogen would dissolve in one liter of water? Assume nitrogen exerts a partial pressure of 0 0.987 bar. Given that Henry's law constant for nitrogen at 293 Kelvin is 76.48 kilobars. Bar and kilobar. You can see it is, we would rather prefer the bar here. So we will convert the kilobar also into bar. But let us see what is given to us. What are we expected to find out? How many millimoles of nitrogen? You are asked the number of moles, millimoles of nitrogen. In order to know the number of millimoles, you must first know the number of moles of nitrogen. And to know the number of moles of nitrogen, where can you calculate the moles of nitrogen from in Henry's law? From the mole fraction. What is mole fraction? The number of moles of solute divided by the number of moles of solute plus number of moles of solvent, that is water. So, if we know x, we can calculate the number of moles from x. So, the first aim here would be to find out x. The question is, what have we been given? We've been given the partial pressure, that is P is given to us. P is 0 0.987 bar, right? And Kh is also given to us, that is the Henry's law constant is Kh, 76.48 kilobar. I would like to convert this into bar, so this would be 76.48 into 10 to the power 3 bar. This would be uh, equal to 76480 bar, right? And you're supposed to find out the mole fraction. According to this, now, you have K, you have P, you can calculate the mole fraction from this. So, P is equal to KHX, so X would be equal to, or mole fraction would be equal to P upon KH. And P is given to us is 0 0.987 bar. And KH given to us is 76480 bar. Right? And bar and bar get cancelled. You get a ratio here and the ratio that you get here would be equal to 1.29 into 10 to the power 1.29 into 10 to the power minus 5 is the mole fraction. Right? Now we've calculated the mole fraction. And what is this mole fraction? Mole fraction of which gas? Nitrogen gas. Would be equal to number of moles of nitrogen upon number of moles of nitrogen plus number of moles of water. The solvent. What would the number of moles of water be? If nitrogen gas is bubbled through water at 293 Kelvin, how many millimoles of nitrogen would be in 1 liter? 1 liter is how much? Is 1000 ml. And the mass of water for 1 ml is 1 gram. So the mass of 1 liter of water is about 1000 grams. Using that, we can calculate the number of moles of water. Number of moles of water would be equal to, what is number of moles? The mass upon uh, molar mass. The mass given is 1000 grams and molar mass is, how much of water is 18 grams per mole. From this, the grams and grams get cancelled, mole moles goes up and you get the number of moles is 55.5 is the number of moles of water. So now you have the mole fraction you've calculated here. Substitute this and you'll get, and listen, the gas, we know the solubility of gases in liquids is very, very low. 
So the number of moles of nitrogen in the denominator is really very insignificant in comparison to the 55.5 moles of water. So here we could avoid or neglect this. So this becomes Xn2 becomes equal to NN2 upon NH2O, right? And N N2, X N2 we have, we need N N2. So N N2, that is number of moles of nitrogen would be equal to X of nitrogen, mole fraction of nitrogen into the number of moles of water. And this we've already calculated is 1.29 into 10 to the power minus 5 into number of moles of water is 55.5 moles. And from this, what do you get? 7.16. 7.16 into 10 to the power minus 4. 7.16 into 10 to the power minus 4 would be the number of moles. Now, in order to get the more millimoles from moles you will multiply by 10 to the power minus 3 so this would be equal to 7.16 into 10 to the power minus 4 into 10 to the power 3 millimoles and if you do this you get 7.16 into 10 to the power minus 1 which becomes equal to 0 0.716 millimole and that is your answer right now after this, I'm going to do the in-text questions, the two in-text questions done with the topic. Give me a moment, let me write down the question. All right. Now this is question, the in-text question 2.6. The question reads, H2S is a toxic gas with rotten egg-like smell and it is used for qualitative analysis. You must be using it in the laboratory already. If the solubility of H2S in water at STP is 0.195 m. Now small m means molality. It means it is the number of moles of the solute in 1000 grams of the solvent or uh, 1 kg of the solvent. So it means that he has given you the molality and from this we will have to deduce the values. So calculate the Henry's law constant. We know, according to Henry's law equation, P, the partial pressure of the gas, is equal to KH, Henry's law constant, into X, which is the mole fraction of the solute. Now, we need to find out the mole fraction of the solute. The partial pressure is, is it given to us? H2S, you have to calculate at STP. The solubility at STP therefore the pressure is the pressure of the standard temperature pressure and in bars the STP the pressure in bars at standard temperature pressure is 0 0.987 bars so we have pressure we need to find out KH but for that we need to know the mole fraction and in order to know the mole fraction what is mole fraction mole fraction is equal to the number of moles of the solute what is it H2S upon number of moles of H2S plus number of moles of water. Now number of moles of, let us assume that the solution that we have is a thousand grams or it is one liter. If it is a one liter solution then the mass of water would be how much? It would be 1000 grams. From that we can calculate the number of moles of water and if in that much of water the number of moles of H2S given is 0 0.195, we can calculate the mole fraction of H2S. So, X of H2S, mole fraction of H2S would be equal to this. So, uh, let us from this, let us find out the number of moles of water. You have 1000 grams. What is number of moles? Mass, that is 1000 grams upon molar mass, which is 18 grams per mole of water. So the grams and grams get cancelled. From this you get 55.56 approximately. And 55.56 moles. Right? It is, yeah. And from this you calculate the mole fraction. In order to calculate the mole fraction, you write X of H2S, that is mole fraction of H2S. From this would be equal to number of moles of H2S is 0 0.195 upon, and since mole fraction is just a ratio of the number of moles, 
therefore it doesn't have a unit and divided by the number of moles of H2S is again 0 0.195 plus 55.56 and when you solve all of this the mole fraction that you would get would be approximately equal to 0 0.0035 0 0.0035 you'll get is the mole fraction now you have the mole fraction the partial pressure is the pressure at STP that is 0 0.987 and from this you can calculate the Henry's constant so kh if p is equal to khx then kh would be equal to p upon x and x is of h2s and partial pressure also is of h2s so partial pressure of h2s is at stp is 0 0.987 bar upon x would be 0 0.0035 is the number of moles so you'll get kh in bars and when you calculate this, this comes out to be equal to 282 bar. 282 bar would be the value of KH. So now we do one more question. Give me a moment. Now this is the last question for today. The question is in text question 2.7. The question reads, Henry's law constant for carbon dioxide in water is 1.67 into 10 to the power 8 pascals at 298 Kelvin. So Henry's constant, that is KH is given to you. KH is given to us, which is equal to 1.67 into 10 to the power 8 Pascals. Okay. You have to calculate the quantity of carbon dioxide. That is, how do you find out quantity of quantity in Henry's law is in terms of mole fraction. So if you get the number of moles, you will get the quantity and number of moles is obtained from the mole fraction. So, it, you have to calculate the quantity of carbon dioxide, that is the number of moles of carbon dioxide in 500 ml of soda water when packed under 2.5 atmosphere carbon dioxide pressure. In terms of Henry's law equation, you are concerned about the partial pressure because Henry's law equation is P is equal to KHX, right? So, the partial pressure therefore given to us P is equal to is given is 2.5 atmospheres but we need to convert it into pascals. So this will be 2.5 into 10 to the power 5 pascals in order to have both the units in the bo both of them should be in the same units both the pressure units. So from this we are now concerned to find out the number of moles from the mole fraction. So to do that we must first know the mole fraction. So we have two of these quantities out of the three, we can calculate mole fraction. So P is equal to KHX, so X would be equal to P upon KH. And P partial pressure is 2.5 into 10 to the power 5 pascals upon KH is 1.67 into 10 to the power 8 pascals. Both the pascals and pascals would get cancelled and you would be left with no units for the mole fraction because it is the number versus number, it's a ratio. And the value that you get here would be 0 0.0015. 0 0.0015 is the mole fraction. Uh, is the mole fraction of uh, which gas? Carbon dioxide, right? Now, how do you calculate the mole fraction? You need the number of moles of carbon dioxide. For that, you, what is mole fraction? Mole fraction of carbon dioxide would be equal to number of moles of carbon dioxide upon number of moles of carbon dioxide plus number of moles of water. Now, in any solution of gases, if you get the number of moles of the gas in the denominator with the uh, solvent, this number of moles is negligent. You can actually neglect it. So the simplified version of this equation would be this is equal to or it is equal to NCO2 upon NH2O, right? Now, in order to calculate the number of moles of water, how would you calculate the number of moles of water? Water, number of moles of water would be equal to mass. What is the mass of water given to us? 500 ml would be 500 grams. 500 because 1 ml of water weighs 1 gram. So 500 ml would weigh 500 grams upon molar mass of water is 18 grams and grams per mole. So you'll get the number of moles which would be equal to 27.78 moles. 27.78 moles of water you've got. So now let us substitute XCO2, XCO2 
is equal to number of moles of carbon dioxide upon number of moles of water and we have the number of moles of water we need number of moles of carbon dioxide we have the mole fraction of carbon dioxide so nCO2 would be equal to xCO2 into NH2O and xCO2 how much had we calculated it to be 0 0.0015 and NH2O number of moles of water was 27.78 moles and you'll get the number of moles would be since this does not have a unit and that is number of moles you'll get number of moles of carbon dioxide when you solve this you get how much 0 0.042 0 0.042 is the quantity in terms of mole but uh, physically when we are talking in chemistry it's okay to talk in terms of uh, moles but physically when you're talking of the quantity you need you you do not have anything to measure moles Therefore, you either have a weighing balance or something. So, in terms of grams, let us describe it. We know that the molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44 grams per mole. Right? And there are 0 0.042 moles. So, the mass of this would be 44 into no, the mass of 1 mole into the number of moles is 0 0.042 moles. And mole in, mole inverse will get cancelled. You'll get the mass in grams, which would be equal to 1.848 grams. 1.848 grams. Right? So these were three questions based on Henry's law. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do not forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and please recommend it to all your friends. And keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.